Okay, let's cut the patterns onto all six sides of our die. And let's do it in a way that is precise enough, but efficient above all else. First up, just confirm that your three tools, the center drill, the drill, and the chamfer are loaded into the mill and measured. Then find a 3 seconds hex key and check out this cool feature on the front of our Kurt vise. There's a little stop mounted on the front, and if you loosen that screw just a bit, you'll be able to slide the stop out to the side and make use of it. So wiggle it out and turn it over to check out how it's made. Do you see the angle here that divides the main body of the stop from this little sliding wedge? That wedge slides when you tighten the screw. And when it slides, it makes the dimension of those combined pieces bigger, locking it into the groove here at the back jaw of the vise. So go ahead and insert the stop into the groove and position it a little left of center and tighten that screw a little bit. And you'll come across this ill-defined notion of how tight is the right amount of tight often on this journey. Let's talk about the clues present here to get from ill-defined to pretty well-defined. Look at the hex key that I'm using. It's got a short arm and a long arm. Notice how the long arm is going into the screw and I am applying torque to the short arm. This acts as a natural limiter. It helps prevent me from over torquing this tiny little screw and consequently destroying it. I really just need enough torque here that I can't wiggle the stop back and forth. So what is this thing for anyways? Well, load your parallels and with the stop in place, you'll probably notice you need to load shorter parallels to get under it and then load your material and slide Slide it to the left until it stops against the stop. Then close the vise gently, seat your stock with a plastic mallet, apply torque to the vise, and you're ready to cut your first top face. We're gonna do rectangle block probing again, but this time we are gonna probe on Z. So make sure the probe Z line says Y for yes. This will reveal a Z surface line with a value of negative 0.25. This just means how far down do you wanna search for the top of your metal? A quarter inch is a good amount. X and Y are the dimensions of your stock. And having milled everything now, the real dimensions are 0.9 and 0.9. And then this Z down here, is asking how far down are we going to descend to find the side walls of our rectangle block. And negative 0.4 should work great. Cycle start and you should see the probe descend up to negative 0.25 inches to find the top surface and define that as Z0 and then travel out enough to get around a 0.9 by 0.9 rectangle block descending negative 0.4 before coming back in to tap the sides to determine the center of this block. Then call up your program, 1011. Give one last check to your tool numbers, your Z-min values, your work coordinate system, and then hit cycle start to go. And here our Z-min values are only descending a tiny amount, less than 0.1 inches down below Z0. But even still, it's worth putting a ruler in there and seeing just how far that is in our real setup. When you're ready to go, just like every other time, go slow, hit feed hold a lot, creep up on first contact, and then fully pause, blow off the coolant, and lean into the mill to look at each new tool. Look at the center drill to see what it really did. Pause after you're done peck drilling and look in to see what that really did. And after the chamfer is done, look at that, haul it out, feel it with your fingers and fingernail, look at it under the microscope. And then load it back in for the two-dot pattern. And take note of how efficient the stop can be. You load in, slide over to it, close the vise, seat the part, torque the Device and you can hit cycle start right then. You don't even have to probe because all six of our dot programs make use of the same conceptual starting point, the center of the material, the top of the metal. And if you care that your die functions like an actual playing die, just make sure that each pair of opposite faces adds up to seven. So one should be opposite six, two should be opposite five, and three should be opposite four. And now that you're all set up, cut and cut and cut all six faces. This is where you start to experience the real power inherent in the repeatability of a CNC mill. Good. Take it out and blow off thoroughly all of those little pockets to get the coolant out of them. Loosen the vise stop and stow it back on the front of the vise. 
Blow off the parallels and get them back in the drawer, blow out the vise, and then admire your handiwork one last time. You could, at this point, consider yourself done, but we're gonna go one step further. Next step, we're gonna put a mirror finish on it and add a bit of paint to finalize our die.